Good day everybody, Sebastian Keynes here with another Rage Shadow Legends presentation. For this video, what I decided to do was cover a Magic Legendary Champion that the community really doesn't talk about. For those of you that are not familiar with the Nag or just pulled them, just a brief overview of his kit. In his A1, he has a 50% chance of applying a decreased defense, a 60% decreased defense which actually can be increased if the opponent has a fear or a true fear. His A2 has a 100% chance of placing the decreased accuracy and uh, a true fear, which um, is 100% if it's booked, but it's also, it cannot be resisted by champions from the High Elf or the Dark Elf's faction. His A3 will ignore shields. It attacks only one enemy. Uh, it will bring the cooldown of the skill if it kills an enemy and also has uh, an opportunity to place a 30% increased crit damage uh, buff on this champion if the attack kills an enemy which uh, is I think unfortunate for a legendary where you only get the buff if you kill the enemy not before you attack the enemy I think that that would be something that Plarium could look into changing on him if they are looking to make him a little bit more desirable for uh, PvP content. His passive heals him if he kills an enemy up to uh, by 50% of his max HP. But what's really more intriguing about his kid is that if he does kill an enemy of the Dark Elf or the High Elf factions, he will get an extra turn. So when it comes to PvE content, uh, such as the Doom Tower and Faction Worth, I think that you can take an opportunity in using that part of his kit. And in Arena, it could actually come in handy uh, if you are facing opponents that have Arbor, Madam, Lydia, you know, or any type of nuker from the Dark Elves or the High Elves faction. Before um, I show you a little bit of what I did with him in game, I'm just going to go over his masteries really quick. Pay attention here that I did play pick the, uh, Blade Disciple, and that had to do with the fact that I was able to reach 100% crit rate with the uh, the gear that I had placed on him. If you need a little bit of help getting to the 100% crit rate, then I would suggest that you pick the Elite Precision. I went into a standard setup for a Nuker, uh, which primarily I wanted ruthless, am uh, ruthless Ambush to try to get as much damage as I can from him in the first hit. If he does apply a fear or true fear, then he, we can get uh, not, uh, more damage out of him uh, since he does that. But eventually what I wanted to do was come down to Helm Smasher. I did use the support tree primarily for PvE content in trying to uh, help him set up the decreased defense. If he did land it on his A1, give him a little bit of accuracy. You will note that in Faction Worth, I use an Accuracy Aura, so I wanted to boost that up with a Support Tree, and I gave him Lord of Steel. You can go down the Defense Tree if you want to give him some survivability in Arena or um, Faction Worth, if you're struggling to keep him alive, and, you know, possibly take Retribution and Delay Death. That's an option that you have. Okay, so for his... Uh, uh, for his artifacts, I decided to uh, focus on the equivalent of Savage, which in case this is lethal, is a four-piece set uh, that ignores 25% of the enemy defense, and it gives, gives us a little bit of a boost with the crit rate. I tailored this uh, presentation more for those that are going to be mid-game going into late-game, as I think that this legendary will afford you the opportunity to battle and, and tackle that content a little bit more so um after taking some input for players that are in those levels i decided to gear him in this manner which was give him about 5500 attack with 257 critical damage and he has 100 percent crit rate i did not worry too much about his accuracy he does have 144 Given that I have a full faction guardian, uh, no, excuse me, yeah, that I have a faction guardian and that I have affinity uh, bonuses in the great hole filled out, it does help boost them up to 144. But the master is selected, and then the aura, um, given uh, accuracy aura, you can then boost his accuracy and where you need him. 
in in the event that you do want to load them up with accuracy. I do have to say that the reason that I also was a little bit of intrigued about his kit, it was because in Hell Hades' website, he is classified as having very good multipliers, especially for his A3. His A3 is 5.9 times attack. Not only that, they classified as godlike. So that was one of the reasons that I decided to build him, take him out of the vault, take him around, see what he can do f uh, for us in the game, and at the same time, give you an opportunity to make a proper assessment to see if it is worth leveling for your account. So with that, let's go take him over and see what he can do. All right. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take him to Dune Tower and I am looking for floor 33. Floor 33 has uh, dark elves and waves. We can take advantage of that, utilize his kit to his put full potential. So what I'm gonna do here is I am going to set up a composition where uh, you can bring increased attack with Gorgorov and he's also a reviver. We can also bring in Ugo. He will give uh, sh uh, she will give us a decreased defense. I am going to bring in Helmet. Helmet is going to give us the speed up. It's going to give us also extra damage with his A3, uh, with his uh, increased critical damage. And I, I feel that these are all epics that you can attain, uh, should be able to attain mid game uh, to late game. And Siler. And here, this Siler uh, has a stun set. So she's also going to be able to control the waves and her speed down and her decreased turn meter also is phenomenal for this type of content. All right, so let's um, increase attack with Gorgorov. I'm going to decrease defense with Ugo. Siler controls the waves. I'm going to target here at the Foley. So I'm going to take the Foley down. Okay, and now the fall is down. It gives us the extra turn. We'll do the A2. You can see it does decent damage. So, uh, you know, he is, he's, a, he's a very good nuker. All right, so similar setup here. Now we have three Dark Elves. And um, we're gonna Increase attack. We're going to defense down. Uh, it got resisted on the left hand side of the screen. Okay, so an extra damage. We're going to go after Queen Eva here to get us the extra turn. Let's see if we can bring some Dark Elves down with our A2. Yes, we got Folly, so we now get another turn. You can see that after this turn is down, our A3 is already on, um, out of cooldown. So definitely, his his kit is amazing when you're dealing with um, when you're dealing with elves, especially in content where there's a lot of elves. And that A three again, and then you saw the um, boost tune meter that he got after he killed an enemy with his A three. We take down Elva or Queen Eva, and now we get an extra turn, but we target the wrong one. So that's something about his AI. And, you know, he won't automatically target elves. So you will have to tell him to do that. So right there, he was a little bit too quick for me. I could have clicked Foley um, and then Vergus, but the way it was already done. So there you can see, I mean, his his uh, kit is certainly phenomenal when it comes to damage. And uh, you can certainly, if in, in certain situations, you can take advantage of his kit when it comes to dealing with Dark and High Elves. Let's take the nag over to Faction Worth to, to, to see what he can offer you if you are still trying to tackle this content. I am going to go to stage 21. And in this setup here, what I decided to do was use champions that I think that you will be able to have access to if you are playing the game uh, in 2023. For sure, you're going to have access to Artax since you got that champion for free in the login uh, rewards. I am going to put Sargala here for the defense down. You will probably have other options. Duke the Pierce is another one that you could probably bring in just to help you 
clear the content a little bit faster especially with the boss since this is the swap boss you do really want to make sure that you can get as much damage on him so you can either get him down before he does the swap or you can get him down on the turnaround after he does it as quickly as possible i'm bringing here brass here for the heals he will essentially take care of us and will alleviate the need to place a reviver in the setup and i also here have ironclad if you have another champion that can give you attack up to try to improve the next damage then that is certainly something that i would suggest that you do if you see any stuns on the waves it is most likely coming from ironclad due to his pass passive and the fact that i do have him in a stun set in this setup so just keep an eye on what the night will offer you especially on the on the waves since there are dark elves on those waves and then at the boss you can kind of see the type of damage that he will offer you as well Okay, let's take him to Arena. So here we are in Gold 5 and is after fairly recent after reset here. So we're going to try to find some matches. So this one here looks like a speed team kind of match. So let's do this. And let's bring our Atanag in. So let's try doing the speed match. So typically most most people will use the cleave um to try to uh, farm g5 so that's what we're going to try to do here all right let's see my average my average is pretty slow these days so okay so now let's neutralize them a little bit and then yeah so we gonna cleave and let's just boost everybody all right so here here's the first thing so we know our we took our turn and we have um the extra turn if he does end up killing an enemy so for this battle here i'm going to start with the a3 so there we brought down uh brought down arborer 
and so now we can just use the aoe and it goes brings down he you, you saw there that he got the boost on his turn meter after he was able to kill people so that was go to the next let's see here candy and we're going to be surprised with swiss perry arbors so okay all right so candy is force so we'll figure out so what we have here is if arbiter remains alive or ethos even remains alive or, or even um madame sarah's remains alive the fear should not be able to be resisted so let's try that let's see if we can kill them and if they remain alive see if the fear sticks no no we got them all never mind we can find something a little stronger should we see how he does against something like this so that's a gonna be a hefty one so let's try that now we don't have the advantage uh really of the elves but we can definitely try let's see if we can get past the shields we kind of did so we we got enough damage at least in there now here's the here's one of the fortunate things it was the fear got on Mithrala, but uh and it's okay uh it did not proc so we just got to remember that when it's against you it won't proc but it's on you it will proc 90 percent of the time all right so uh here the only the only way i'm gonna get an extra turn is if i kill metrala and we did wow wow we just went to metrala with uh strengthen okay and let's see if we can finish off the mountain king decrease turn meter perfect almost and that was even uh, against affinity all right so that one that one's a good match i would not bring him against the udk to be honest because you will not be able to use his a3 let's try let's try this so let's say how fast would they be this is gonna be yeah let's let's try this this is a it looks to be a bit of a thicker it must be there might be stone skin involved in here i want to see if he can take this duchess down so we're going to try to put defense down on her okay here we go so uh, we'll use the a3 because we're testing for so let's go after duchess One hundred and thirty-one thousand. not bad Okay, so I'm gonna boost them again. Yep, and we're up to the next turn. So, and that martyr was a swift berry martyr. Of course she was. All right, let's see if we can steal it. Nope. That was actually not bad. Oops, I misclicked on that one. That was actually not uh, bad in terms of um, of how much. Um, damage it did against that duchess pretty pretty th so here's another duchess let's let's try this again um maybe she's a stone skin stone skin duchess uh no it's not so at least we'll get to test that and we've got to be careful with that fenix but well, let's see if we can do this okay here we go so how about we try the a2 this time so it almost brought her down with the A2. But since there was an arbiter in here, we get an extra turn. Now we do bring it down. So that's kind of the kind of the, the kind of damage that you can expect from him, especially if you're just farming. So 
another way that you can do this is if you think you're gonna lose the speed race, let me bring I'm gonna be you in. Right, let's see if all right, there we go. Do your thing. Oh no. Am I faster? No, 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 I'm not supposed to be fast. All right. Oof, E5. Okay, there you go. Let's see? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to revive everybody. You could go second. I'm going to take down Arbiter. And I'm going to try to nuke everybody. And because... The, the fear is irresistible. He went on, on, um, on um, the trial there. So he does have the ability to take down some tanky champions, especially if you are progressing to the game, you're coming up through gold, trying to get to G5 and farm some metals. So I'll leave you with this. The Nag Skull Rip is a very good nuker for those that are in the early mid game going into late game. Late game to me is try getting Lydia. Once you get Lydia, I think that that's um, when you can classify yourself as being in the late game. I think that you, if you need help in advancing in 3v3, clearing some Doom Tower content, yes, if you gear him correctly, you can get damage out of him. I would caution you though, I do not think that you need to invest legendary tomes on him unless you are overflowing with them. We know how difficult it is to get them in the game, especially as you are progressing your account. So for the end gamers, you will know he has too many uh, chances to apply debuffs and with stone skin and polymorph, it will be really hard to use him in those setups. The best thing that he will probably do for you is transform into a sheep. Another area of the game where the Nag can probably offer you some utility is the live arena, where if your opponent is selecting too many elves, you could probably sneak him in on the last couple of picks, maybe afford you an opportunity to get extra turns and have an advantage over them. And in that regard, I think it might be worth looking at him and it is up to you to really make the assessment if he would add something to your account that you are lacking and that you need to help you clear the early stages of Doom Tower Hard and uh, complete Faction Wars. I'd like to thank you for tuning in and watching. If you found this video at all helpful, hit like, subscribe for future Raid Shadow Legends content. And with that, I thank you very much for watching. We will see you next time.